Hi good people, Titus here for another Unreal Engine tutorial, and in this video, I'll show you how to quickly create and prototype empty levels. This will be a simple tutorial to follow, and we'll cover the Unreal Engine's modeling toolkit, which makes this type of workflow incredibly easy. Let's not waste any time and jump right into it. Alright, so starting off I'm going to be using the third person template. Uh, I am make sure the starter content is checked, give a name, choose a location, and hit create. All right, we'll load up to the default map here. Um, to enter the modeling tools, you can press Shift-5, or you can come up to the top left corner, select the selection mode, and change it to modeling. Uh, the left-hand panel will have all your options. We have the Create, Xform, Deform, Model, Mesh, Voxel, Bake, and UV sections here. Uh, if you follow this channel at all, you'll know I do most of my uh, 3D work in Blender. Um, I still prefer to do the UVs uh, in Blender. I prefer the baking to be done in Marmoset. Um, but a lot of these other tools uh, I'm going to start taking advantage of. Um, for instance, the Create menu has a lot of good options for just getting basic shapes out in the world. You can adjust them, move them around, uh, rotate them. However, you basically need to set it up. Uh, and they have some pretty good options here. Uh, one thing I'll say is these stairs are particularly useful. Uh, you can increase the stepped height. You can change it from a linear to a floating staircase. You can do a curved or a spiral staircase. Uh, and you can also change uh, the spiral angle and the step height. So very useful um, doing that because it's nice to be able to do that directly in Unreal rather than working in Blender, having to export it and seeing if it lines up. So that's very handy. Um, the other thing that's very useful here is going to be the uh, cube grid. We'll go over that in a second though. Uh, the XForm tools are basically only available when you select an actual mesh. So like if we select this cube here. Um, you can basically edit pivot points, um, manage the transform, duplicate, but I'd say the most useful thing is the pattern option. If you come from Blender, this is probably akin to the array modifier. Um, you can even change it from the uh, line position to a circle and then you can uh, increase or adjust the count as appropriate. So you can get some interesting shapes that way. The deform uh, options has your displace modifier so you can get some good uh, damage effects using that. Uh, Perlin noise is probably my favorite one to use but you also have the sine wave uh, constant, random noise, and then you can also generate a texture map off it as well, which I don't have. It also has a warp modifier. You can switch this from bend to twist, and you can mess with the twist settings here. All right, let's move into the model section. Uh, most interesting thing in the model section is probably going to be the plane cut um, as well as the mirror modifier. I'd say that's very useful as well. Especially if you work in Blender, you probably use a mirror modifier uh, a lot during your workflows. So very useful there. Under the mess section, um, I'd say probably the thing I'd use the most in here is probably the remesh, but I still am probably going to stick to Blender for most of my direct modeling. So I won't be in here a whole heck of a lot. Uh, but if you're going for a particular art style like voxel, the voxel wrap can be very handy. Uh, you can reduce the voxel count and then you can get your interesting 3D, I guess, um, art style. If you have a bunch of meshes and you just want to, you know, voxel them out and make them look uh, kind of like battle bit, uh, that can be a, a quick and easy way to do that. And we also have the bake and the UV options, and it even has a UV editor. But I'm going to stick to Blender for now for that. But it does uh, offer that to you if you want to, you know, take a look at it. All right. Now the uh, main point of this video series was to demonstrate the cube grid. The cube grid will only work if you have uh, nothing selected. If you select something, it's going to try to modify. Like right now, I think I have the sky spear selected. So if I did cube grid, uh, it's not going to work. 
Um, so in order to deselect everything, you can just simply press escape and it'll deselect. And then you can go into cube grid and you should be able to make selections that way. Or if you happen to select part of your map, you can go into cube grid for that, but you're gonna be modifying that as an object. So even if you go over here and you add, you know, certain meshes, it's gonna be a part of this wall or this wall object. So just be aware of that. Oops, undo that. All right, so I'll press escape, make sure nothing's selected. Go to cube grid. And then if you were building out an empty level, you can just drop the grid, you know, create an area. Your key commands are basically E to extrude, and you can extrude up, and Q to extrude down. Another way you can do that is you can hold control, click up, and you can just simply drag it up or down. After you've extruded part of your, you know, your object or your mesh, you can then build upon it, so we can maybe select something over here. And then I can hold control, drag it up. And then if I wanted to, I can make various selections around the mesh. And just pressing E, I can extrude it out. And just like I did that, you can also make other selections, press Q, and you can dig into the mesh like that. And you can even get some tricky designs too, like say you came around here and you extruded this side, and then you extruded this side, and then you can extrude them, actually create like a little path there. So very, uh, very simple modeling uh, process, but you know, it works. Uh, if you needed to make like a, um, like a room, uh, one way you could do it, you just get your room size, and then I can control grab it up, and then say I wanna dig in a couple spaces. So I'll leave two on the left and right, one on the forward and back. So maybe just do something like that. Now, before actually digging in, I can press Shift Q and that'll pop it down. And then you can either control drag it or you can just simply press Q repeatedly until you dig out the mesh where you need it. And then maybe I'll dig it right there. And then if I wanted to see the result, I can grab into here, press Q, and now suddenly you can see the area that I made. Maybe I need a skylight. I can come over here, press Q, add a simple skylight, and you got one of these. At any time, if you're happy with your selection, now remember this is all one object, uh, you can just hit accept, and then you'll notice the lumen will actually activate after you've accepted the mesh. So now you actually have that lumen shading, so when we come in here, it'll brighten up over time as our eyes adjust, which is pretty nice. The other thing you can do too is after you've accepted your selection, uh, you can add a material to it. So maybe if we add like a brick layer to it, if you had the starter content, then you get very quickly you know, a realistic building. Now, obviously I made all these one mesh, so it probably would have been better to do them separately, but it's yeah, just demonstrating the point basically. Uh, another good thing to do too with uh, this tool. So if we go in here, we press escape, nothing selected, cube grid. So now I'm making a new selection. Um, if I was to, Say I wanted a ramp, uh, maybe I can come over here, press control, drag this up, and then I can come over here, press control, drag that up. And once you have a selection, uh, yeah, I'll use this one, that's fine. Uh, you can actually press Z or Z as in Z and it will, oops, try that again, uh, Z, there we go, it'll bring up these selection points and you can just click on the points that you want, so it'll leave these other points alone and then when you press control and drag out, you can create 
ramps. That's a very quick and easy way to make a, a ramp system. And then you just press enter and it'll lock that selection in. And then you can continue modeling out as you need. Now another cool thing to do, um, let's say I'm okay with the selection, I'll accept it. And maybe let's add some type of material to it. Maybe something weird like that, why not? Uh, what you can do with your modeling tools is we could create a sphere, drag it out in the scene. I can maybe scale it up, accept that. I can then go to my deformation tools, add a displacement modifier. Oh wait, it's because I wasn't on uh, Perlin noise, that's why. I had changed the options earlier, that's why. All right, so we got an effect like that, and maybe I increase the intensity, you know, whatever you're, you're kind of looking to do. And then maybe you get like a really interesting shape like that. You can accept that, and then you can use it as like a, uh, like a modifier brush. So uh, if I move this over, And I gotta find a good place to put it. Maybe we'll just take a chunk out over here. So say you wanted to create like an interesting damage effect on this corner, maybe something like that. Uh, what you would do is you put it in position and then you select the object you want to stay first and then you control select or shift select the secondary object. You can go to your model section add a boolean, give it a second. It'll then process, and if you wanted to move it around at this point, you can, or you can accept it. And now you have a really interesting um, damage effect on your model. And then just remember the uh, shortcut keys mainly for this is gonna be um, Q and E, which is your extrusion, either up or down. Your shift Q and E, uh, which is basically to lower or raise that bar. So I probably didn't demonstrate that effectively, but if I um, go back into the cube grid, you, know, you can press um, E to extrude, then I can do Shift E, which will move it up, and then I could just do E and you can create like little spacing and stuff. So it's very, uh, very helpful to know these shortcuts. And then Z is your other shortcut, which allows you to do control points so you can get different uh, extrusions but yeah I just kind of wanted to demo this uh, this little tool set I think it's very handy uh, and I don't really see a lot of people using it uh, it's probably because they're they're just using their own 3d software but you know it's available for you guys and it's great for quick prototyping so uh, I thought I'd just uh, throw it out there but this concludes this video tutorial. I hope you found some informative value in this topic that you can bring into your own projects. But as always, thanks for watching, consider subscribing, and see you on the next one.